I was recently asked, how do you use the normal maps that are created inside of VRED when you're editing photos in Photoshop? I have always known that this was a workflow, but I never really looked into it myself as to how to do it. So the first thing I did is a little bit of research, and I found this great, quick 60 second tutorial on how to use normal passes inside of Photoshop. I'll put the link below, but I've taken this knowledge and I've applied it to VRED, and I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself. So now we're inside of VRED. What I have is a complete exterior and interior. I'm gonna go in here and sort of pick my interior camera angle something like this. The goal is to show most of the IP, the driver's side door, and the top of the seats, and a little bit of the exterior. Try to pick a height that's about the passenger's eye point. So now I'm going to enable GPU ray tracing. Once the ray tracing is enabled, and now that we're accurately calculating the lighting in the scene, you'll realize that this black materials in the footwell of this vehicle is turning very, very dark, and I'm not able to see any of the shape and form. I could increase the exposure of the HDR to add more light into the scene, but that would have a negative effect of making my background very bright and all the surfaces that actually look good in my scene would also become brighter. I could add in spotlights or any other type of light into the scene to try to shine light down into these areas, but that requires a little bit of experience and I could end up spending a lot of time doing something that doesn't look that good. And I really want to get this rendering done as quick as possible. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to use the normal map to enhance these dark areas. They're not the focus of my rendering, but it definitely is really noticeable how black these areas are. So the normal map, the normal pass, can be found under Render Pass Rendering, Auxiliary Channels, Normal. And what a normal pass is, it has nothing to do with lighting. What it's doing is adding color to all the geometry based on the direction of the surface or the normal of the surface. So everything that's facing this way is pink, everything facing down is orange, everything facing the opposite direction is green, and everything facing up is blue. So this is all the directional information of the geometry in the scene. And this is what we're going to use inside of Photoshop to add in some lighting. So let's switch back to realistic rendering. And now I'm going to go to my render settings. I am going to render with the denoiser on. I'm going to do a thousand samples, high quality for adaptive sampling. Under file output, I'm just going to render this at 1920 by 1080. I go down to render passes, and when I enable export render passes, the default is set to beauty. Beauty is on. Beauty is the your beauty rendering. I want to add on the normal channel. So when I enable normal, if I go to render, you'll now see that there are two files that are going to be exported. I can save a step in Photoshop by turning this checkbox on. Enable multi-layer PSD for render passes. By turning that on, 
you'll see that my total number of files drops to one. So this will create a single PSD file so that I don't have to open multiple files, combine them in Photoshop, just do it all at once. So when I hit render, I now can save the file type. It was set to EXR because the last tutorial I did was using Cryptomat using the EXR format. So now I need to switch it to PSD. And now it will render out a Photoshop file. So let's get ho. Let's hit go. So let's hit go and wait for the rendering to complete and jump into Photoshop. Now we're in Photoshop and we're going to use what we learned in that tutorial. In my layers, you'll see that I have my beauty pass and underneath it will be my render passes. So I want to double click on my normal layer and that allows me to just hit OK, which unlocks it so I can drag and drop it and put it on top. Next thing I'm going to do is create some adjustment layers. The first one we're going to create is a uh, levels. Then hue saturation, channel mixer, and another hue saturation. If I right click, I can say create clipping mask. If I hold down the alt key, this does the same thing. So if I click on the line between the layers, it turns it into a clipping mask. For the levels layer, I'm going to move the middle point up until I end up with a red, green, and blue situation. Hue saturation. We're not going to adjust this yet, but I'll show you what happens. When I move the hue around, it allows me to reposition what's blue, red, and green. So the door is red, now the door is green, now the door is blue. So this is letting me move everything around, and that'll become more apparent on the next step. The next step is the channel mixer. The first thing we want to do is make it monochrome. Now we end up with this flat gray color all the way across, but by turning down the blue and the green, and turning up the red, and focusing where the light's hitting. So now when I go back to my hue saturation, I now get to move that red around. So as I move the red around, I can adjust where the lighting lands. So in this instance, I want to really light up the door. So I'm going to put the door, the light right like this. And if I go back to uh, the normal layer, I can switch this to screen. And by adjusting the opacity, I can dial in how much light I put onto that door. So I'll put it somewhere around here. And that looks good, except for this is sunlight coming in. So this is where the other hue saturation level layer uh, comes into effect. On the top hue saturation layer, I can say colorize. So now I'm going to color the light that is hitting these surfaces. Obviously, I don't want it to be this saturated, and I want it to be something more warm, like sunlight. So I'm going to pull it to an orange era, sort of an orangish shade hue, and then move the saturation down. So it's just slightly warm. So now if I take all of this and I'm going to put it into a single group and I can turn it on and off. So I'm really quickly and easily able to put light into an area where I want it. Now, if I, if I stand back and look at this image, I realize that the footwells are now the black hole of light, or lack of light, should I say. So I can take this whole group and duplicate the group. And so this will be group two. 
Now for group two, go back to my hue saturation and reposition where this light's hitting. So I want to get it into the footwell and I'm going to actually go back to my channel mixer and if I move if I move the the blue and the green up it sort of spreads out where the color's hitting. So back to my hue saturation uh, kind of somewhere I really sort of want it right in between right about there. And go to my hue saturation, the top level, and instead of being warm light, I'm going to switch to be cool light. So something bluish, kind of similar to what's going on with all the light that's hitting the top of the IP. Just do a little, little adjusting here. That looks good. Great, so really quick and easy way to allow an individual user to come in and, and, and adjust, add a little bit more definition in areas that were too dark, and be able to control them and dial them in as needed. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks for watching.